Anything when you start your Sanskriti, your culture is very important. So blowing out helps you to clear your passage, to make that your eye becomes powerful. From seeing to absorbing, your ears become powerful, the cells in the brain start waking up. This is the first culture. Whenever you go anywhere, make sure before you start your studies, before you go for your interview. Before you do anything, blow your nostril. And then you tell, you control the breathing. You don't allow the breath to control you. So you inhale from your left. You tell him that I tell you to come from the left. Then I ask you to go from the right. Then from the right. Then from the left. Then you inhale. Hold it for four times of what you have taken. And exhale two times of what you have Retention. Retention. Again, inhale four times of what you inhale, two times of what you have retained, retained. And then you go to, in, to your interview, you go to your studies, you go anywhere, you can see the clarity of the truth. You don't have to do anything. In olden days, the Maharishis, people used to go to Maharishis, they look one round. And they tell you past, present, and future. You can see fire poker Zen. Fire poker, when you talk about the fire poker, this nun was traveling, and every nun or a monk is allowed only one night to stay in a monastery, and then the next day morning they should continue walking till they reached another monastery. This nun reached a monastery, she got a chance to stay inside for the night and it was terribly cold and in the monastery there were hundreds and thousands of wooden Buddhas, Buddha, Buddha statues. She picked up one or two of the Buddha statues and burned it up so that it can warm up her body. And as she was warming up her body, the Temple priest comes running and said, what nonsense have you done? She said, what did I do? You have burnt down the Buddha. And she said, really? And she took the fire poker and started digging and selling. But I couldn't find any bones. <laughs> that was the fire poker. Akwin used to tell his pupils about old women who had a tea shop praising understanding of Zen. The pupils refused to believe. What he told them will go to the tea shop to find out for themselves. I can you tell you about a tea shop? And so the tea lady has got a fantastic grasp of Zen. It is almost like the student who ran away from the monastery and he was passing through the market. And then you would find the, the butcher in the shop. You could overhear the butcher telling the customer, everything in my shop is the best because the customer told the butcher, give me the best, pe me best piece of meat from your shop. And the butcher screamed, everything in my shop is the best. And for a second, the monk who ran away from the monastery was shocked. He had a satori. It became enlightened because 12 years being in the monastery, he only found fault like our children. They find fault in the house, in the father and mother, and the grandfather and grandmother. And from here they go to the school, they find fault with the teacher and the school. And from there they go to find fault for the companies where they are working. They find fault with the politicians, find fault with anything and everything. And the whole world find fault in them, the whole body. When you point one finger, three fingers are pointing back to them. The pupils refused to believe what he told them and would go to the tea shop to find out for themselves. <laughs> Whenever the woman saw them coming, she would tell it at once whether they had come for tea or to look into grasp of Zen. Moment she see a customer, yes, it's psychology of the person who is deeply involved. When she when our Queen Master has told his students that there's a tea shop and she has a beautiful grasp of Zen, and the children did not understand. 
in the book of the five rings written by miyamoto musashi and it has become the bible of the american businessman in that book it says miyamoto miyamoto musashi says if somebody touches your skin cut his flesh and if he cuts your flesh you cut his bone and he cuts your bone you take his life and the world was shocked what kind of philosophy this one and americans have taken this and become the bible of their uh, business no 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 what the master hakwin felt is whenever you are doing any job you are deeply in love like a karma yogi the team master or the the person who's selling the meat he says everything is best in my shop and he look at the customer he knows the customer because he's deep in love with it when somebody cuts your skin you cut his flesh means you go a little more deeper to make it more better more better till you find the enlightenment there is no more to make it better because the whole world is included in that beauty because you find every customer is god aditi devo bhava yes he that's what sakin told his students but students went for comparative studies every student look at you when you teach them something they want to find out whether your master is better or other master is better yes whether your father and mother is better or other uncle and aunt is better whether your brother at home or sister at home is better or outside your girlfriend boyfriend is better there is no comparative study because you have to only improve on it cut your flesh you cut his bone cut his bone to take his life means you and they have become one like namaste and when you and the opposite partner become one your husband wife become one there is satoris there is an explosion of orgasmic experience that experience is your alignment past present future stops for a second when the woman saw them coming she would tell it once whether get come for tea or to look into her grass for then in the former case she would serve them graciously yes because that is her job and the deep master is her duty to make the tea is properly that it is a thicker one or it is a lighter one she knows what the customer likes it and what amount of powder to be put what amount of sugar to be added or the amount of milk to be added she knows it so when the people come she would gracious because it is god in front of her she got an opportunity to serve them and they will always make sure they give her something as thanks as them it is a great thing to see many people come to understand their philosophy and psychology yes it is so beautiful but apart from that somebody has come to ask for a word then she understood this in the latter she would beckon to the scene from behind the screen the moment they ask about her that was then she asked them to come behind the screen and the moment the student come behind the screen she understood this student was studying under a great master a great master what was the one is stupid i would put it and find that call it behind the screen can you believe i can kill them i can rape them i can destroy them i can tell dirty stories look at them i call them they came how could they come they are come to my shop to buy if they have two different mind then i should not destroy that master ha queen so she took the fire poker and gave them one <laughs> they ran where they should run they should run back to the foundation where the feet goes run they must run with a beating because hus is already a matured zen monastery the tissue and you are in deep in love with your subject the whole world is unto you and when you practice the samskriti you understand that you have to do a stomach pump so your gastric is gone your diabetes is gone there is no cancer when a particular area is not moving it becomes cancerous if you keep the room locked for a long time 
there you can find cockroaches rats so making the whole body exercise physically and mentally keeps the diseases away and then you know you have to eat foods before your meals you have to chew your food properly you have to drink enough of water and you have to make sure you sweat with the warming up and stretching you don't act like your dancer and a singer or the dramatist or the class teachers or the factory workers slaves they are all slaves why i call them slaves because they need the beating of the fire poker anything you do you have to do your warming up exercise all the joints you have to loosen up minimum for 30 30 times before you should start the work before you should even go near to your wife or a husband it is your duty to make sure there is a warming up and stretching you take them for a walk chit chat and then only you have even the right to enter into the temple make an attempt to enter into the temple of that god a goddess she understood if i had not done it this children are lost so she was a great master she boom she poked it <laughs> and they ran and they understood they must have got satori's they understood and hakin master must have got the best laugh hakin used to tell his pupils about an old woman who had a tea shop praising her understanding of zen what is the praise of zen when when you are eating you are eating when you are sleeping you are sleeping and that is zen when you are running a tea shop you are running a tea shop you make it such beautiful it is a temple a tea shop is a temple yes any shop any house is a temple if you deeply involve in it the people refuse to believe that what he told them and would go to the tea shop to find out for themselves whether the whenever the woman saw them coming she would tell it once whether they had come for tea or to look into her grasp of zen in the former case she would serve them graciously in the latter she would beckon to the pupils to come behind a screen the instant they obeyed she would strike them with a the fire poke 9 out of 10 would not escape her beating 90 second story from zen fresh zen bones written by paul trips